Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of Aunt I a Woman, a speech delivered by Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth was an African-American abolitionist and women's rights activist and she is best known for her speech Aunt I a Woman, which was delivered at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in 1851. She was born as a slave and her original name was Isabella Famfrey and she was owned by Colonel Hardenberg and she lived in an estate in East Office in New York. Before the slaves were declared free in July 1827, she escaped with her infant daughter to freedom in 1826. She converted to Christianity and changed her name to Sojourner Truth. Later, she devoted her life to the abolition of slavery and is considered as the most powerful advocate for human rights in the 19th century. Sir John Truth's memories were published under the title The Narrative of Sir John Truth, a Northern Slave in 1850. This speech, Aunt I a Woman, was delivered by Sir John Truth at the Women's Convention in Akron, Ohio in 1851. And it is about the inequalities that women and blacks faced at that time in America. So Jonah challenges the prevailing ideas of racial and gender inequality by reminding her listeners of her physical strength and hard work which she contributed as a slave. She says that the male argued that women should not have the same rights as men because women were inferior. They also argued that women were weak and that the first women Eve was a sinner. She says when black men speak about racial equality, they talk about black women as a marginalized section, that is as a weaker or a lesser people. And even the white women who call for gender equality consider the black women again as marginalized. And so, so John Truth calls for the voice of the black women to be heard and she says that her claims to, has to be addressed. In the end, she says that this double marginalization of black women, that is being considered inferior even by, by, by black men and by white people, is all based only on the skin, color and gender and nothing more. Before she could speak, a Christian male speaker spoke and he claimed that women were weaker than men less intelligent than them and they were placed below men not by anyone else but by God himself. Now truth responds to all the three claims in a speech where she uses rhetoric and personal examples to reinstate the physical, intellectual and spiritual strength of women. While speaking about the physical strength, she points out that the reality of the treatment of enslaved women who share the work and the punishments of the black women in the plantations. She talks about herself as an example to prove the claim that women are weaker than men. She says that she is as strong as men in her capacity to work in the field, planting and harvesting equally. And more than that, she is also strong in her capacity to accept the pain of the lash which they use to punish her. She shows the audience the muscles in her arm and lists the agricultural work she has done as evidence of her equal strength, demanding the audience to consider the question, aren't I a woman? Furthermore, she says she has enough physical strength to give birth to 13 children and above that she has the emotional strength to see them taken away from her and sold into slavery. It is because she is a woman that she survived all the physical, emotional and psychological trauma of slavery. And coming to intelligence, she says that the reason for women's weakness is a supposed weaker intellect. Truth argues that if women's intelligence is like a cup that holds a pint and men's hold a quart, men would be quite selfish to withhold any of women's smaller measure. And Truth believes that men are mean-spirited and jealous of the brain given to women. She also believes that intellectual capacity should have no bearing on the rights of women or blacks. Then finally, she speaks about the spiritual strength. She addresses the short-sighted religious view which denies women their rights because they are inferior to men in the eyes of Christianity. 
the preacher who spoke before her claimed that women were denied equality because Christ was not a woman. Truth counters it with a question. Where did Christ come from? She asks this to make the point that although Jesus Christ was a man, that should not be an argument against women's right because Jesus was born of God and a woman, not of man and a woman. No man was involved and therefore they have no right to deny women their rights. So John's concluding remark is a powerful message about the power of women. She says that Eve, the first woman who was created by God, and all the men consider her responsible for the original sin because she tempted Adam and led them out of the Garden of Eden, turning the world upside down. So she says, if this is true, then all women are daughters of Eve. If Eve can turn the world upside down, then all the women together have the ability to set the world right. And she ends her speech by calling for women to go and get their due rights so that they can set the wrongs to right. And so Jonas Truth's powerful speech remains one of the best examples of the voice of black women in the 19th century. If you have anything more to add on to what I've said, please write it in the comment box. Like the video, share with your friends. And if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe. Thank you.